Uh, today we're talking about parabolas, uh, so let's just get started about what we talked about last class. So last class uh, we talked about um, parabolas in terms of angry birds, and uh, more, more importantly, what is happening uh, when we shoot that angry bird. And uh, what does happen is uh, just like what happens in real life, to a point. Obviously, when it hits the objects, it's not quite as uh, predictable as it should, but, you know, there's, that's a video game for you. So first off, what we did in class was we had some fun just playing around with the game, kind of getting used to it, uh, enjoying ourselves. And then we started talking about what happens to the bird. Well, first off, we shoot it from a slingshot, which, which starts it out at initial velocity, and it accelerates really rapidly initially. But as time goes on, gravity starts having an effect on this bird. And eventually, the bird starts to decrease. So let me uh, pull this picture over here for you guys so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. Uh, so this picture of, is a, a picture of um, a shot that I took in class yesterday. Um, you can see clearly see the path here uh, that my uh, bird took. Uh, started here, uh, started here at the slingshot, and it travels until it hits right about there. So you'll notice, um, oh, that's a little off, but that's okay, no big deal. So my my bird roughly travels in the shape of a parabola. Uh, and basically, let me just erase this real quick here. There we go. So what happens when gravity acts upon uh, our, our bird is gravity affects all of us all the same. And gravity is affecting these birds just like it affects us. And it affects us at 16 feet per second squared. Oops, per second squared. And that squared is what gives us our curve to our arch, to our parabola. That's why it gets that bend. Uh, so when you see uh, a fountain and you watch water coming out of that fountain, uh, it's doing the same thing. It's curving because of that 16 feet per second squared uh, that gravity is pulling us down. And it's negative 16 feet per second squared because it's pulling us down. If it was a positive, it'd be pushing us up. Uh, and that's not the case. So um, let's l take a look at uh, another example uh, that I have for you guys. Um, let me just pull this up real quick. Uh, so what we did was after uh, a while, we started. I started having you guys create your own uh, screenshots of shots that you took. And I asked you to take three screenshots. And then what I had you do was I had you take those screenshots and put a graph over them. Uh, so here's one that I did, um, and let me just erase my markings here. There we go. Um, and you can see that uh, the parabola that I that I've created, uh, I've overlaid a graph on top of it. Now that graph. Um, is used to create our axis, our x and y axis. And so what you can do, what I told you to do, uh, is use the ground as your x axis and put your y axis anywhere on the parabola. It doesn't matter where you put it, you just have to figure out where it goes. Um, it's all relative. Now, uh, one thing we did talk about is uh, where the birds cross the x-axis. Obviously it crosses wherever the slingshot hits, but it also crosses wherever the bird lands. Okay, So your task for your homework or for the rest of the class was to create three screenshots and to graph each of them separately. Uh, so if we draw in my x-axis here, I can guess by looking at my graph that it crosses the x-axis at negative 4. 
and about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, positive nine. So then what I had you do was, so it crosses at x equal to negative four and x equal to positive nine. From there, what I had you do is I had you create the formula or the equation for this parabola. Since it's equal to, e equal to x, uh, equal to negative four, uh, what I did, wh what had you do guys do actually, was set it equal to zero. So then from here, we did added four to both sides, so we get x plus four equals zero, and we subtracted nine from both sides, so we get x minus nine equals zero. And then we took both of those and combined them into one equation. So because they're both equal to zero, I can multiply them and set them both equal to zero. Then from here, we just multiply out, so we get x squared. This is just an example. This isn't what I did in class, but this is what an example for you guys. So we have x squared, and uh, 4 times x gives me 4x, and negative 9 times x gives me negative 9x. So that adds to give me negative 5x. And th then 4 and negative 9 gives me negative 36 equal to 0. So that's the equation for the parabola of my path of my bird. Now again, it's all relative. This equation only matters based off of where I put my y-axis. If I change my y-axis, then that changes the equation. So it doesn't really matter where you put the y-axis, it just matters uh, that you find the correct x and y-intercepts. Now the other thing after I had you find the equation was I had you write this in um, in standard form. So let's copy our work here so that we can oops new slide I'm gonna get rid of that picture so we have something to to look after that's a blank canvas and here we go so let's say I have this equation, x squared minus 5x minus 36. So we have x squared minus 5x minus 36 equal to 0. What I want to do is I want to put this in um, standard form. So to do that, I would have to complete the square because I want it to be something squared on one side. So I'm going to have x squared minus 5x, I group those together, and I move the negative 36 to the other side. So I have equals positive 36. From here, I want to think, well, what's half of negative 5? Uh, half of negative 5 is a negative 5 halves, 5 over 2. So I plus 5 over 2, but I have to 5 over 2 squared. So 5 over 2 squared is 25 over 4. Now since I added 25 fourths on the left, I got to add 25 fourths on the right. And then since I have a perfect square on the left, I can uh, oops, factor this. So this gives me 5 halves squared equal to 36 plus 25 over 4. I need to have a common denominator of 4. 36 times 4 that's going to be 144. So I have 144 over 4 plus 25 over 4, which gives me x minus 5 halves squared equal to 129 over 4, oh, excuse me, 169 over 4. Okay, which I subtract from both sides to get zero, so I get x minus five halves squared minus 169 over four equals zero, and I can replace zero with f of x or y, so my standard form of my equation is this. And that's all there is to it. So that's what we did in class. I also asked you to find the focus the directrix, the, what else did I ask you to do? 
I ask you to find the center of, or the vertex of the parabola. And I asked you to find the axis of symmetry. And all that uh, is what we did in class last time. So, here's a bit of information. If you didn't get this from last class, um, oh, running low on power. There we go. Power connected, good to go. So from last class, uh, there's a bit of information you need to know to do some problems like these. Uh, the first one is, uh, you all know how to find now the uh, formula or the standard equation of a parabola. So let's, um, let's then, oops, I'm messing up a lot here, aren't I? Okay, so, um, axis of symmetry, there we go. Wow, I'm scatterbrained tonight. So the axis of symmetry is just a bit of information for you that you needed to know to uh, answer the questions um, that will be on um, next class, that we'll talk about next class. So if your parabola is vertical, so that's y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, then your axis of symmetry is going to be x equal to h. If it's the other one, where it's x equals a times y minus k squared plus h, then it's going to be y equal to k. So I'm going to get rid of this title up here, and then I'm going to move everything up top. So if you have these two, there we go. So if you have these two equations, you have the two forms of your equation. Uh, so your axis of symmetry for each one is x minus equal to h and y equal to k. For your vertex, they both have the same form, hk. For your focus, your focus is h comma k plus 1 over 4a. For the first one, and k or h plus 1 over 4a comma k. And then your directrix equation is a line is y equal to k minus 1 over 4a. And for the other one, it's x equal to h minus 1 over 4a. So these are the key pieces of information that you need to know for the lecture last class, but also uh, to, you know, just to f find the different parts of a problem. And we're going to talk more about these and practice and do th stuff more with them next class. Um, but let me just go over an example for you right now. Okay, so here's an example. Let's say that we have 3x, uh, excuse me, minus y squared equals 8y plus 31. And we're asked to graph. For the sake of time, I won't graph this, but I will show you the steps you need to do to graph it uh, without the graphing part, just the parts you need to find. So first we're going to write it in the form, in standard form. So first I'm going to get all the y's on one side. So I'm going to have 3x equal to y squared plus 8y plus 31. Then from there, I'm going to complete the square. Now, when you complete the square, you can either add something to both sides, 
or add and subtract it from the same side. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to have 3x equal to y squared plus 8y plus whatever I'm going to add plus 31 and then I have to subtract whatever I'm going to add. So 8 is my middle term, half of 8 is 4, square that we get 16. So I'm going to add that here and subtract it here. Then since I have a perfect square in the parentheses I can factor so I get 3x equals y plus 4 squared plus 31 plus minus 16 is 15. Now I divide everything by 3 so I get x equal to 1 third times y plus 4 squared plus 5. So this is the standard form of my equation. And from here, I get all my other information. Right away, I can say my vertex, my hk, is 5, negative 4. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's my vertex. Next is my focus. Let me copy this so we don't have to go back. Oops, looks like I'm running about out of battery again. Something's going wrong. Sorry about this, guys. Now you want to work. Okay, good. All right, so. <laughs> so our equation is x equal to 1 third y plus 4 squared plus 5. We already found our vertex was 5, negative 4. If I want to find my focus, remember the focus from the information last time is h plus one fourth a k. So I'm going to take my h value, which is five, and add one over four times my a value, which is one third. And that's my x value, and my k is negative four. So from here, I just have to add, so this is 5 plus 1 over, well, plus 3 fourths, really, because 4 times 1 third is 4 thirds, and then I'm dividing it into 1, so it takes the reciprocal, so this is 3 fourths, comma negative 4. And 5 plus 3 fourths is the same as 5 and 3 fourths, so I just write it as one mixed number. So that's my focus. Then we have the directrix. That's x equal to h minus 1 over 4a. So this is going to be x equal to 5 minus 1 over 4 times 1 third. So x equals 5 minus 3 fourths, which is the same as 4 and 1 fourth. So the directrix equation is x equal to 4 and 1 fourth. Then one thing that I didn't ask you in class but um, might be key is which way are we going? Which direction are we facing? Up, down, left, or right? Uh, well, since a, my a value, since my a value, where'd we go here, is one third, and it's a positive one third, a is greater than zero, which means it's going to be facing to the right. So 
So that's an example for you. All the, all the possible pieces of information you would need. So, hope that helps. Here's your multiple choice question. Pause the video, work on it yourself, and when you're ready, submit the form. After you finish this free response question, Have a good evening.